Okay, so you've kind of started analyzing how f, the graph of f, and the graph of f prime can tell you some information about each other. We want to be specific and detailed now in analyzing functions. So when you're given a function f of x, can you use f prime of x to give you information? about f. So let's just do a quick example graphically and then we'll analyze the just the functions algebraically and with calculus. So <clears throat> if you have a graph f prime, so let's say I graph f prime. Okay, let's say this is the graph of f prime. You notice that here to here, f prime is negative. Meaning f of x is decreasing. When your slope is negative, your function's decreasing. However, from here to here, f prime is positive, meaning your function is decreasing. When your slopes are positive, your function's increasing. So you know something about this point right here. You know that before this point, x, y, your slope is negative, so meaning f of x is decreasing. Then it becomes zero right here and becomes increasing because your slope is positive. So it tells you that your function hits a minimum. Over here, on the other hand, you go from a positive slope to a negative slope. So your function goes from increasing to now decreasing. So you go from a positive slope to a negative slope. So your function is increasing, increasing hit zero, as you can see, your slope becomes zero, and then starts decreasing. So here at this point, you have a maximum, okay? So this quality of f prime, your slopes changing, tells you when you have a minima and a maxima for f of x. So you can use f prime of x to know your minima and maxima for f of x. So let's look at it again from a standpoint of the function. So let's say I give you a function, 3x squared plus 4. Let's say I want to know where the minima, my local minima, and local maxima are of this particular function without graphing. Well, we know that we hit a minima or a maxima when, first of all, f prime of x switches signs. So when your slope goes from either negative to positive or positive to negative. Now, this can only happen when f prime crosses the x-axis. You can't switch from positive to negative unless you hit zero first. Like you can't just skip from here to here without hitting the x-axis first. So we know two things. We know obviously f prime becomes zero and we know it switches signs. That will then tell us if our function has a min or a max. This 
use of f prime to find min or max is called the first derivative test. So let's try it out. Let's do it with this example. Your f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 4. Again, we're looking for when, first of all, our speed becomes 0 because that's when our speed might switch signs. So we want to know what our speed is, which is f of x. This is our speed. Our velocity, our slope is our derivative. Okay, so let's find f prime. It's six x. We want to know when this becomes zero because that's when we could potentially switch signs. So let's solve for x. Divide both sides by six. We get that x is equal to zero. So we possibly switch signs at x equals zero, but we don't know. We then have to see what happens before zero and after zero to see if we switch signs. One value before zero is negative one. So we want to know what happens to f prime of x at negative one. So we find f prime of negative one, which is six times negative one, which is negative six. So before zero, our slope is negative. After zero, and a value after zero is one, f prime of one. So six times one is six, that's a positive number. So we do switch signs. We go from a negative slope to a positive slope, meaning our function goes from decreasing to increasing, and we have a min, okay? For the values to test before and after, you want to use easy numbers. That's why I use negative 1 and 1. Anything can work as long as it's before your critical value or after. x equals 0 is your critical value. This is when your speed becomes 0. Your derivative becomes 0. Okay, so, so far we know that we have a min at x equals 0. But we want to know what the y value is there. Otherwise, we don't have a point. We just have an x value. To get our y value, we plug it back into our original function. We have to get f of x to get our y value. So y is f of x, which is, sorry, 0. So x equals 0, y equals 3 times 0 squared plus 4 which is equal to 4. So our point, we have a local min at 0, 4. Let's do another example. So let's say I give you f of x equals um, 1 over 2 root x plus 3x to the 4th. I want to know where my local min and my local max are possibly. So once again, we want to try to find our first derivative, which is our slope. We want to know when our slope switches up. So we find our first derivative. Um, this can be rewritten. Actually, let me rewrite f of x. So f of x can be rewritten as 1 over 2 times x to the 1 plus 3x to the 4th. Since x is on the bottom here, we can again rewrite this as 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. Put it on the top now, make the exponent negative. Plus 3x to the 4th. Okay, so now that I simplified it a little bit, we're going to find our derivative. Multiply negative one half times one half, I get negative one fourth. Okay. Minus one half minus one is minus three halves, and plus three x to the fourth. Okay, so we want to know when this is equal to zero because that is when our slope switches signs possibly. So we set this equal to zero. So we have negative one fourth x to the negative three halves plus three x to the fourth 
equals zero. Okay. So we can plug this into our calculator. Um, well, let's rewrite it just to simplify it a little bit. Negative 1 over 4 times x to the 3 and the square root of that plus 3x to the 4 equals 0. Um, I can plug this into my calculator just to see when to solve for x. Um, so we can go to so I'm trying to solve for when so I'm trying to solve for when um, 1 over 4 times x to the 3 um, Plus 3x to the 4. Sorry. Um, my apologies. I did the derivative wrong. It should actually be 12x cubed right here. Sorry about that. So this is 12x cubed. This is 12x cubed. This is 12x cubed, okay? Um, and we want to know when this is equal to zero. So I'm putting it into my calculator. So plus 12x cubed is equal to zero. And it looks like my x values are approximately, oh, it looks like it happens when x is, oh, sorry, it's not quite correct here. So it looks like our x values are never equal to zero. Um, so there are no local min or max. So it looks like my x is never equal to zero. So no solution. So x is f of x, f prime of x is never equal to zero. So no local min. For f of x. Okay? So sometimes you can have this happen. Um, if you can't find an, an x that makes your f prime zero, clearly you never switch signs. You never go from negative to positive slope or positive to, positive to negative slope. And you have no mins or max. In the next video, I'll show more examples of the first derivative test. And then you can do some practice on your own.